Yes, sir. Okay, once again, so good afternoon. So we are now in our science class. And just like what I um, announced yesterday, so we're going to have first our uh, preliminary quiz. So I'm going to send it to your um, GC, grade 5 Pahimis. So please answer that for, I think, five minutes you can do that. Or less than a minute. Or less than five minutes, rather. So here is it. Sand. Next time, if you are not sure with your answer, try to analyze the question again before submitting. Because hindi to paunahan. Because if you will do that way, you'll really get zero or one. Because these stages of menstrual cycle, definitely their characteristics are like 
there are times that it sounds similar. That is why you really need to study. That is why the book is available. It was there. The module is available also. It's also written there. So you have all the resources to use for you to, you know, master the competency which are, um, of identifying the stages of menstrual cycle, namely the follicular phase, this, the ovulation, the menstruation, and the luteal phase. And beside, this is an announced test yesterday. So you have all the evening or the whole, you know, half day of today to review. So I am expecting you'll get a high score in this quiz. I'll give you two minutes to finish the exam or the quiz.
When I'm waiting for their other responses, please, please watch this one. To understand the various ways that medical science can assist reproduction, it is important to understand how the reproductive system functions in both sexes, because the cause of infertility often lies equally with both men and women. The main players in the female reproductive cycle are the pituitary gland, the ovaries, and the uterus. Their activities are closely coordinated. Each month, one or other ovary releases a single egg, an event known as ovulation. It is brought about by a series of complex interactions between the pituitary gland, the ovaries, and the uterus. The pituitary gland is itself under the control of this small area of the brain known as the hypothalamus. A new menstrual cycle begins when the nerve cells of this center secrete a hormone called gonadotrophin-releasing hormone, GNRH, into the network of blood vessels which surrounds the pituitary gland. Stimulated by pulses of gonadotrophin-releasing hormone, cells in the pituitary gland secrete another hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH. FSH travels in the bloodstream, reaching the ovaries. There it stimulates the formation and growth of an ovarian follicle in one or other ovary. The follicle consists of an egg, a number of surrounding cells which secrete estrogen hormones, and fluid. FSH helps the egg to mature and prepares it for release. As the follicle matures, the hypothalamus increases secretion of GnRH. This in turn stimulates the pituitary to secrete a second hormone which acts on the ovary. This is luteinizing hormone, or LH. Toward the middle of the cycle, there is a sudden peak in the blood level of LH. This acts as the trigger for ovulation. Within minutes of its release, the egg is guided by suction through the fringed opening of the outer end of the fallopian tube starting it on a journey which will take five or six days as it passes down the tube and finally reaches the cavity of the uterus. Meanwhile, after the follicle ruptures, it is converted into this yellowish body known as the corpus luteum. Cells of the corpus luteum secrete the hormone progesterone, which brings about important changes in the lining of the uterus, preparing it for possible pregnancy. In fact, the lining of the uterus, known as the endometrium, undergoes changes in response to hormone levels during the cycle. In the first half of the cycle, known as the follicular phase, the developing follicle secretes increasing amounts of estrogen hormone, which encourages regeneration of the endometrium. After ovulation, there are important changes in the endometrium, aimed at making it suitable to receive a fertilized egg. These changes are brought about by a secretion of progesterone from the corpus luteum. The secretion of progesterone is maintained for several days, but if the egg is not fertilized in that time, the corpus luteum withers, and falling levels of progesterone and estrogen trigger the shedding of the uterine lining as the menstrual flow. The cycle then starts again. But if the egg is fertilized, no menstruation occurs as the corpus luteum continues to function, secreting progesterone during the first three months of the pregnancy. Thereafter, numerous changes occur to support the developing embryo. Okay, so that's how it is explained the 14th day, the ovulation, when it releases an egg, that is an ovulation. But then, as I can see uh, in the answers, you are asked when is the stage where the egg was released? Mali pa rin yung sagot. Hindi yung sagot yung ovulation. Kaya nga, ang kloko nung ni Distasuyan, when we see ovulation, that is an ova, that is an egg. It means the release of an egg. So if it's an ova, it's an egg. The process of, you know, 
of maturing and then releasing that is called ovulation. And then there's a question here. If you of a girl's uh, first day of menstrual flow is January 31, well, be the, when will be the next menstrual flow? We have 28 days, so you will just count. So if your first day is January 31, so that is your day one. So you're going to count 28 days. So your 28th day will be February 27. So the next stage of the menstrual flow will be February 28. Did you get it? I don't know what did you add, what did you like right there. It should be February 28 because your day one is January 31. So you will count 28 days. February 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and hanggang February 27. So nabuo mo ngayon yung 28 day cycle. So yung susunod na menstrual flow or period is February 28. Okay? So the first day of period counted na yun sa day 20, sa kabuuan ng 28 days. You get it? It's already counted. So another, when you are asked something about uh, stimulating the growth of ovarian follicles and thickening of the endometrium, we talk about the follicular stage, okay? That is in preparation for the release of an egg. But then the other term, which is the luteal, okay, the luteal phase is... Um, when the hormones act on the uterus for the preparation naman of, of pregnancy. Did you get it? Magkaiba yun. Preparation for pregnancy that is for the luteal uh, stage. But the preparation for the release of an egg that is for the follicular stage. Okay? And yun. Nagkamali pa rin sa I think that is question number what question is that? Yung sagot ay dapat menstruation. For a while, I'm looking for that. Yeah, number three. In this stage, the thick lining of the uterus will slow off, off and will be eliminated from the body as the menstrual blood. Oh, il eliminate daw, dal, na, la, eliminate daw sa katawan through a, a blood. Lalabas daw as a blood. O ano mang tawag doon? Demonstration. O bakit mali pa rin ang sagot? When we say elimination of blood from body, going out of the body, that is menstruation. So anyway, so for those naman who got like five, like for example, Amer and the other one is Kia. Very good because definitely I, I believe uh, you get the point of the menstrual cycle. So only two got the five points in this examination. So let's continue. Um, please review the menstrual cycle because I'll give another, uh, the next time that we'll meet, okay? Another questions, another set of question parallel to this quiz about the menstrual cycle. Now let's proceed. Okay, the next one is, yeah, since we have now on the, our next lesson, we are going to deal with, yeah, definitely we're going to deal with this one. So the question there is, do you have pet? Do you have? Do you have? Why? Why Why you really love like taking care of your pets? What, um, what kind of enjoyment it, or, you know, Share something. Why do you like to have some pets at home? Anyone? Yes, Bella. Because they help me comfort myself when they're cute. Okay, comforting. What else? Comforting you. What else? Aliyah. Oh, no. Is it Aliyah or Toby? Yes, Aliyah. Because it is fun to play with them. Fun to play, yes. Um, serves as your friend, right? <laughs> That's why those who are like taking care of some like dogs, they call it usually man's best friend. You, you can play with them, definitely. What else? Oh, what, what? what else? 
Yes, Dana. Because they can guard us. Yeah, they can guard us. So I'll just get some, uh, I mean, three answers for that. So let's proceed. So I believe that majority of you has like pets. So do you think animals have also a reproductive system? Mia, do you think animals have also a reproductive system? Yes. Yes, definitely. So why? So I'm going to explain. So definitely, animals' lives, like, um, same with human, hindi naman tayo nabubuhay plus forever, just like animals, right? So they need to reproduce. To what? To sustain the life. Because if there's no reproductive system, there will be no offspring. And definitely, there will be no growth of population. That is why it is important that animals also reproduce, okay? To, to continue the process, to continue the life, all right? So producing new animals may mean like food supply also to us. For example, diba, we eat chicken, we eat um, pork. So definitely, um, it serves as our you know resources for food. And another thing, that is balancing the ecosystem. Kasi halimbawa, class, kung yung isa hindi nag-reproduce, for example, um, yung insects, hindi nila kaya mag-reproduce, yung frog, walang kakainin. So pag walang nakain yung frog, yung frog mamamatay din. They will definitely die. And then the snakes, wala din silang kakainin yung frog, definitely they will also die. So it will affect the balance of the, of the ecosystem. So it is important for them to reproduce. Alright? So... Let's continue. In this lesson, or for today's lesson, we're going to discuss here mode of reproduction in animals. Again, please take the notes. Mode of reproduction in animals. So when we say mode, so it uh, deals also with definitely um, in your book, uh, I mean, on your book, there are some, you know, discussion about the parts of the male and female reproductive system of dogs, cats, and frogs. I want you to go over there, or I mean, to look for that. But I have an example here. So the reproductive, can you see the slide? What is that, Miel? show me board? Please focus because we are, we are not using our time for nothing here. But if you know already what I'm discussing, then you can do whatever you want. Or you can just study by yourself if you want to attend my class. Okay, so I'm, I will continue. Can you see my slide? Yes. Now, this is an example of the reproductive system of a dog. So look at the difference for human. Definitely there's uh, are differences, but there are also similarities like the prostate gland. They have also the vast difference, the testicle, the scrotum, and the penis, or the penis rather. So for a male, same. There's also a cervix. Um, ovary, vagina, and vulva, the outer part of the, the reproductive parts. But why do you think uh, for human, usually they give birth to only one offspring or two if they are like um, pairing twins? But why do you think um, dogs can have like nine or more than two or maybe three or four? Why do you think? Why do you think dogs can reproduce uh, more in, in numbers compared to to human? Yes, Amer. Because female dogs' uterus are bigger than humans or can hold more than humans. Yes, very good for the, um, you know, for that answer. At least you are trying to, what? 
Yes, trying to give answers on why. Why really these dogs can actually give birth to more than three offsprings. Now, the, the answer for that is because of this uterus horns. Or another term for uterus horns is uterine horn. Nakikita niyo yung mga circle? So those are horns. It can hold um, several um, fertilized egg or side goat. So it can hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It can hold eight. Okay, so because of this uterine uterine horn or uterus horns. Okay, humans has have, uh, I mean, human has no uterine horn like this, but dogs has or have, they have. That's why it can hold more babies. Okay, so this is because of the uterine horn. Now let's continue. So this is the reproductive parts of an insect. So look at that. It's quite different for humans, but I am showing this to, for you to compare. We have the paired testes and we have the vast deference here. We have the seminal vesicle also and the edicus. So they have no uh, like penis, like human or dog. We will call it the ed edicus, this one. And for female insect, we have the vagina also. And then we have the oviduct, the spermatica. This is unique for insect because the spermatica is where the sperm is what? Being hold first before the fertilization. And there's also an ovary. All right. Now, these are the things to be discussed in this lesson. You need to uh, compare the two of each. For mode of reproduction, you're going to compare internal fertilization versus external fertilization. And then for the type of reproduction, you're going to compare sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Now, to give you cue on what are the difference between these two mode and type of reproduction, let's have first internal versus external fertilization. So in defining word, you need to look for the root word. So we have there in. In means inside. And we have external means outside. So that is your clue. Again, when we say internal, that is inside. When we say external, that is what? That is outside. Okay. So did you get did you get it? So that is our clue. And then the second word is fertilization. Now, fertilization. It means fertilization may take place inside or outside of the body. Now my question, for human, is it internal or external fertilization? Anyone? JC. Internal? Yes, that is external. Uh, internal, rather. Internal fertilization. Very good. That is correct. Now, to understand how fertilization occur, I'm going to uh, share first this one. Please watch this uh, short video about the fertilization. Fertilization is the epic story of a single sperm facing incredible odds to unite with an egg and form a new human life. It is the story of all of us. During sexual intercourse, about 300 million sperm enter the vagina. Soon afterward, millions of them will either flow out of the vagina or die in its acidic environment. However, many survive because of the protective elements provided in the fluid surrounding them. Next, the sperm must pass through the cervix, an opening into the uterus. 
Usually it remains tightly closed, but here the cervix is open for a few days while the woman ovulates. The sperm swim through the cervical mucus, which is thinned to a more watery consistency for easier passage. Once inside the cervix, the sperm continues swimming toward the uterus, though millions will die trying to make it through the mucus. Some sperm remain behind, caught in the folds of the cervix, but they may later continue the journey as a backup to the first group. Inside the uterus, muscular uterine contractions assist the sperm on their journey toward the egg. However, resident cells from the woman's immune system mistaking the sperm for foreign invaders destroy thousands more. Next, half the sperm head for the empty fallopian tube, while the other half swim toward the tube containing the unfertilized egg. Now, only a few thousand remain. Inside the fallopian tube, tiny cilia push the egg toward the uterus. To continue, the sperm must surge against this motion to reach the egg. Some sperm get trapped in the cilia and die. During this part of the journey, chemicals in the reproductive tract cause the membranes covering the heads of the sperm to change. As a result, the sperm become hyperactive, swimming harder and faster toward their destination. At long last, the sperm reach the egg. Only a few dozen of the original 300 million sperm remain. The egg is covered with a layer of cells called the corona radiata. The sperm must push through this layer to reach the outer layer of the egg, the zona pellucida. When sperm reach the zona pellucida, they attach to specialized sperm receptors on the surface, which triggers their acrosomes to release digestive enzymes, enabling the sperm to burrow into the layer. Inside the zona pellucida is a narrow, fluid-filled space just outside the egg cell membrane. The first sperm to make contact will fertilize the egg. After a perilous journey and against incredible odds, a single sperm attaches to the egg cell membrane. Within a few minutes, their outer membranes fuse and the egg pulls the sperm inside. This event causes changes in the egg membrane that prevent other sperm from attaching to it. Next, the egg releases chemicals that push other sperm away from the egg and create an impenetrable fertilization membrane. As the reaction spreads outward, the zona pellucida hardens, trapping any sperm unlucky enough to be caught inside. Outside the egg, sperm are no longer able to attach to the zona pellucida. Meanwhile, inside the egg, the tightly packed male genetic material spreads out. A new membrane forms around the genetic material, creating the male pronucleus. Inside, the genetic material reforms into 23 chromosomes. The female genetic material, awakened by the fusion of the sperm with the egg, finishes dividing, resulting in the female pronucleus, which also contains 23 chromosomes. As the male and female pronuclei form, spiderweb-like threads, called microtubules, pull them toward each other. The two sets of chromosomes join together, completing the process of fertilization. At this moment, a unique genetic code arises, instantly determining gender, hair color, eye color, and hundreds of other characteristics. This new single cell, the zygote, is the beginning of a new human being. And now the cilia in the fallopian tube gently sweep the zygote toward the uterus, where he or she will implant in the rich uterine lining growing and maturing for the next nine months until ready for birth.
Okay. So that is how fertilization occurs. So the video is explaining it further. Like it, it looks like complex, but then to understand it very well, so definitely the sperm will enter the, the vagina of a woman. So it will go through the cervix and then will pass through the uterus. And then the sperm of 300 million in numbers will not survive all. But there are several, several thousands who will survive and they will go directly to the fallopian tube. So definitely the fertilization will occur in the fallopian tube. Did you see that? It will take place there. Only one will succeed out of the 300 million sperm. Okay, it's like a race for them. So they are racing to go to the, to the egg cell or to the egg of a woman. That's a, like a race. Una una sila. Sino unang makarating, that will, that's the sperm that will fertilize the egg. And you have seen kung paano na, 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 na produce yung ana, new substance and then paano siya nagkaroon ng yung mga chromosomes. Although we cannot discuss that further kasi another part yun ng pag-aaral. What we need to focus here is how fertilization occurred. So after that fertilization, it will uh, be swept uh, to the uterus and then will be what? will grow there for nine months and that's the time na after nine months a woman will yes will definitely give birth to a new offspring so that is fertilization so you are right that fertilization is what taking place inside of the human body but take note that in this uh, topic that we have we have external fertilization so if there's internal fertilization, there is also external fertilization. So it means from the word external, there are animals who are what? Fertilizing the egg outside the body. Okay? But there are animals also that similar to human, they are fertilizing the egg inside the woman's body or the female's body. Did you get my point? So that is two kinds of, or two modes. First is internal and the second is external. For cats and dogs, do you think, is it external or internal? For cats and dogs. Mm, yes, Carl? Internal. Yes, that is external. Uh, internal. Why do I have to external internal? That is internal. So, if you observe, pag may aso kayo, tas di ba na buntis, so definitely, pag doon siya nag-grow nag inside the, the womb, that is internal. But there are animals na hindi ganun yung process. Sa labas nila, na-fertilize yung egg, and then doon nila, doon sila na bubuo sa labas. Later, you will know what animals are like. Um, you know, example of animal that what? Undergoing external fertilization now let us let's continue so and fertilization if we will define it is the union of egg and sperm so when we pay, when we say union nagdikit sila right union so na combine fusion to produ produce a zygote so that is a fusion only that is a union. That's how we describe the fertilization. Again, modes, when we talk about modes, it's either internal or external. Now, an example of internal fertilization again is, yes, a dog, cats, usually mammals. What do you mean by mammals? Anyone? When you talk about mammals, what is your idea about mammals? Yes, uh, Amer. Any idea about mammals? Yes, what, what's that? Anyone? Any idea? When we talk about mammals, we are referring to what? What kind of animal? Mammals. 
uh, Alia. Mammals are a group of vertebrate animals. Yes, there are vertebrates. So, vertebrate and vertebrate. So, vertebrate, meron silang backbone, right? And vertebrates, walang backbone. So, vertebrates, animals. That has like, another is, meron silang mga mammary gland. Okay? Um, and mammary gland, rather. Mammary gland. And definitely producing a milk. Kaya tinan yung dogs, may milk din. Nagpapasuso din sila sa mga puppies nila. Same with cats. They have also, you know, you know, milk. So, that's an example of internal internal fertilization and we have example of external fertilization and that is for amphibians and uh, frogs okay or fish yeah amphibians are those animals that can may live water or they need also water just like uh, and then we have frogs and then we have fish so those are the animals that is undergoing external fertilization so look at this example class and the uh, picture that we have here so the chicken here is undergoing internal fertilization why so um, definitely um, a hen and a rooster a rooster is also testicles may sperm tube din siya and then sa, sa hen meron din siyang ovarian tube Meron ding ovary yung hen. Okay? I-release -re ng, ng uh, rooster ngayon yung sperm niya sa female and then will undergo internal fertilization. Did you get it? But we have external fertilization. Ganito naman class ang nangyayari sa external fertilization. The male frog will like uh, do this way. So ano siya sa likod ng female frog. And then they will but both release sperm and egg into the water. And then sa water na sila mag-fertilize ng egg. So I'm going to show you how it is actually happening. So through this video that you're going to watch. So how the fertilization in frog occur. Leave her alone. <laughs> okay, so that's how frogs mate. Okay, the male will grasp the back part of the female, and then both the male and female will release the egg and sperm outside of their body, and the fertilization will occur outside of their body and underwater. So, have you seen the several eggs coming out of the, the frog's cloaca? Cloaca is like the vagina. So, there are several or, you know, many eggs compared to human. Human, only one is matured, maturing. But for frogs, there are several eggs. Why do you think? Why do you think mammals can like... Uh, maturing when we talk about maturity of eggs only like one for human and then for other mammals like dogs pwede nine lang yung maging puppies niya or for cats yung kittens niya ay mga six lang but why do you think for frogs there are like several eggs 
many eggs actually. What do you think is the reason? Yes, Jaisley. Because, because the eggs will fertilize outside of their body. Yes. So that is the main reason. That they, are going, they will undergo external fertilization. And do you think, that is it, is it like safe? Is it safe for the egg to fertilize, to be fertilized outside? Yes, Amer. Sometimes no, because a lot of predators can eat their egg. Very good. So it's not safe because it's uh, what, taking place outside of the body. So other animals like might eat that, like fish. So what is the main reason? That is for survival. At least may matiraman lang na anak. Kasi kung isa lang, pagkalabas ng egg isa lang, nakain pa siya o nanamatay pa, wala nang matitira. ba? But they are releasing more eggs para sure na may mabubuhay. Okay? Makasigurado na, ah, okay, mamatay man yung ibang uh, eggs or yung tadpoles or, you know, the offspring. Still, may, meron pa rin several that will survive after some times. Okay? Yun kasi yung ano kalas ng delikado, external fertilization kasi yung nangyayari. That is why, uh, para mag-survive sila, madami silang nire-release na egg. Right? So, let's continue. Uh, but before that, what are the modes of reproduction nga? We have two. What are those? Mia? Internal and external fertilization. Right. Very good. So, we have two, the internal and external fertilization. So, that is, for the internal, your clue is in. Means, means inside the body. External, kaya nga di ba exit, di ba may, may entrance, exit, so it means outside of the body, external. So those are the two modes of reproduction. Now let's continue. Since you know already that there is like internal and external fertilization, let's proceed to sexual and asexual reproduction. So how... Uh, the offspring is produced. Is it sexual or asexual? Now, what are the difference between the two? From the word sexual, any clue? Anyone? When we heard about sexual? Yes, Jay Lee? Two parents. Yeah, there are like two parents. One male and one female. Hindi sila magkakaroon ng anak kung walang tatay at nanay. That is sexual reproduction. For dogs, it's impossible na yung isang babaeng aso ay manganganak without the male dog. Kaya kung may nakikita kayo sa, sa kalasada na di ba yung ganun ng mga aso, they, will like, they are like mating even outside the house. Kasi hindi nila alam, kasi nga animal sila. Hindi nila alam silang idea about uh, sexual intercourse. So, hindi natin sila pwedeng sawayin kasi ah, animals nga sila. They don't know about such thing. Pero, as human, we need to understand that walang kakayanan na mag-isip ang aso katulad natin. Kaya, huwag natin babatuhin or huwag natin tawag doon. Um, hayaan natin sila kasi that's how animals reproduce. Okay? Tayo ba namang mga tao pinagtatawanan or what in a pinapaalis or pinaghihiwalay eh, that's that's how they reproduce so we we need to respect animals on how they are reproducing okay paano sila nagpapadami so definitely there are like sexual reproduction a male dog and a female dog a male cat and a female cat so that is your clue sexual reproduction need two parents Okay, so that's the opposite of um, asexual reproduction because in asexual reproduction, no two parents are needed in this kind of reproduction. Okay, so look at the asexual reproduction there. Oh, one parent lang oh, and then nag, uh, ano lang siya, nag -de divide Pag nahati, dadami ulit siya. Pag nahati ulit, dadami ulit siya. Hindi niya na kailangan ng parent. Unlike a sexual reproduction, we need human, for human, for example, we need a girl and a boy. 
we have we need a male cat and a female cat but for asexual we don't need that okay so any idea can you please give an example of animal that can reproduce without parents without two parents producing asexually yes amer you're raising your hand starfish yeah very good starfish can reproduce asexually ibig sabihin pag natanggalan siya ng ten, uh, ang tawag natin doon diba star yon pag natanggalan siya ng body parts niya magiging starfish ulit yon okay <laughs> hindi niya na kailangan ng parent para magkaroon siya ng anak magkaroon sila ng anak Right. Like earthworm also. Pero sa earthworm, for earthworm, mayroon mga earthworm na kailangan ng parent, mayroon din namang hindi kailangan ng parent. Okay? But the good, the, the thing that we need to remember here is animals can reproduce asexually or sexually. And we call that type of reproduction. Again, we call it type of reproduction. Sexual and asexual. So before we go there, so let's go back here. Sa mga things to to consider. Oh wait. Yeah, here. So when you say mode, that's your clue. Mode, internal, external. When you ask about the type, type that is sexual or asexual. Again, when we talk about mode, that is internal or external. When we talk about type of reproduction that is sexual or asexual. Now, I'm going to let you watch this video about, um, for a while, about asexual reproduction. So please watch this. Asexual reproduction in animal. What is asexual reproduction? In asexual reproduction, one individual produces offspring that are genetically identical to itself. An organism capable of asexual reproduction is able to produce offsprings in the absence of of a mate. Oh, walang mate walang asawa. Asexual reproduction can be observed in animals like amoeba, euglena, hydra, and sponges. Some common methods of asexual reproduction in animals include budding and binary fission. First, let us learn about binary fission. Binary fission is the most common methods of asexual reproduction it involves the splitting of an organism into two amoeba is a simple unicellular organism which reproduces through binary fission reproduction in amoeba begins with the division of the nucleus the parent organism divides into two individual organisms. During the process, which takes less than an hour, an amoeba can replicate itself to produce two identical new amoebae. These two amoebae will turn reproduce four amoebae, and the process keeps repeated on and on. Amoeba divides after it has grown to a certain size. The pseudopodia are pulled in and the nucleus divides. The cell body begins to divide when the nucleus has split. Can you see that? Two daughter divide. amoebae are formed. Yeah, yeah. that's the, how it's divided. Now let's learn about budding in Hydra. Asexual reproduction in Hydra. 
the formation of an outgrowth from an organism called buds, which is capable of developing into a new individual from a parent body is termed as budding. Organisms like hydra and sponges reproduce by budding. Body from the word bud, form B -U -D. on a tubular body of an adult hydra. The bud develops a mouth and tentacles. The bud detaches from its parents. And it detaches a parent. Yeah. The new hydra is Hello. fully developed and will find its own location after it detaches from parent and develop into a new individual. Okay, so that's how a sexual reproduction is taking place. Okay, it's going to be a budding or like the amoeba. Nagi split na lang siyang ganun. Okay, so that's it for the asexual reproduction. Again, uh, let's have a review. What are the two modes of reproduction? Modes, or we're talking about modes of reproduction. Yes, yeah, Sophia? Fertilization and external fertilization. Very good. So internal and external fertilization. What are the two types of reproduction? Akiko? Yes, Akiko. I, I know your signal is not okay, but just please try. What are the two types? Yes. I cannot hear clearly, but I somehow naman narinig ko na correct. Diana, will you please repeat Akiko's answer? Sexual and asexual. Yeah, correct. Sexual and asexual reproduction. Okay. Now describe the dogs. What types and what mode for the dog? For the dog, what type and what mode? Yes, Aliyah. Inter internal fertilization and sex sexual reproduction. Very good. So that's how you describe. When I ask you, describe how a dog reproduce. Dog reproduce sexually and with internal fertilization. Ganon mag-describe ba? Dalawa yun. Hindi pwedeng isa lang. Kasi there are animals talaga na, yes, there are animals na sexually, but um, actually... External fertilization, for example, frogs. They need parents, but they are the mode of reproduction is external. So for frogs, that is sexual reproduction with external fertilization. Okay? So it depends on the animals. There are animals naman that are sexually reproduce. It means hindi na natin sa kailangan sabihan na if they are like internal or external fertilization because they are producing asexually right okay so for this time my practice mga additional info that will help you more understand or somehow ma broaden pa yung ating horizon when we talk about animals but the important thing here is to just identify the mode and the type pag alam nyo na yung mode and type so we're done okay it means uh, we already got what we need in uh, studying about the reproductive uh, parts of animals. So for additional uh, information or knowledge about these animals, I want you to study by yourself yung mga parts na nasa book. Kasi mayroon dong parts of uh, reproductive of frog, may dogs, may insect. So pwede nyo siyang tingnan doon. And now, what I'm going to share is um, this one. May ilan pa ako class na mga ipapakita sa inyo na na somehow pwede yung ma-encounter that will really help you understand about the world of animals. So we're done with this one, right? So, okay, we, I will example how the mosquito reproduce. Okay? So the male mosquito introduces the sperm cells to the body of the female. So definitely for mosquitoes, that is sexual reproduction because they need also male and female. And then, 
the female mosquito sucks blood. Do you know why? That is to nourish the developing egg inside her body. That's the purpose. Kaya kung kinakagat kayo ng lamok, so they will really suck. They will really, you know, go near to us, to you, because they need blood. And that blood is for the nourishment of their egg inside, yeah, the female's body. Okay? So yun yung itsura ng lamok pag na, kumakagat sa atin, di ba? Pag napatay natin, dumudugo pa nga, di ba? <laughs> Actually, it's our blood. <laughs> Dugo natin yun kapag uh, pinatay natin yung lamok. Ayan. And then after that, the female mosquito lays her eggs in water or attach them on aquatic plants. May mga hayop class na katulad ng mosquito na hindi buhay siya pag inilalabas, itlog. So another idea yon. Kasi ang tao, pag nilabas na yung baby, tao talaga. Same, similar sa nanay. Wala namang tao na nanganak ng itlog, di ba? Na itlog munang nilabas and then saka siya na crack and then naging baby. There's no such thing as that. Similar with cats and dogs. Walang ganon. But for mosquitoes, it's different. Pag tapos ng fertilization, na nourish niya sa loob ng, 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 ng womb ng isang lamok, ilalabas niya as egg. Okay? And then the mosquito eggs hatch a larva, also called wrigglers. wrigglers. Okay? Ganun yung itsura niya. Yung mga kitikiti. Nakakita na kayo ng kitikiti. Kaya, kaya ganyan itsura niya, di ba? And then, ayun na mangyayari. Magiging pupa na. And resting and feeding stage of development of mosquitoes. And an adult, mosquito emerge from the pupa stage. Kaya kung titinan yung kulas dito, sa tubig siya nangingitlog. Kaya, kung ayaw natin magkadengge, kailangan tanggalin natin sa bahay. They need to what? Clean our house. Wala dapat stagnant water. Yung mga sa, saan siya makikita, doon sa mga halaman na pag, pag minawater niyo yung plants, minsan naiipon yung tubig, pwedeng manirando ng lamok, pwedeng mangitlog doon. Ang dadami sila. Okay? So, ingatan natin kasi dengue rin to pag ito ay nangagat. So, ganyan siya klaso. Ganyan ang mosquito. It's actually, you know, sucking blood to nourish the the egg. Pero may ikli lang naman ang buhay ng lamok. Mabilis na mamatay. Kaya ang dami rin ng mga itlog. Okay? So, that's it. For, okay, I will return it para ano. Ayan. Yan ang una, mating. Then, nourishing the egg. Then, yan. We lay the egg. And then, yes. Magiging lamok na siya. Okay? Now, another additional... Uh, later, I'm going to show you paano naman nagsa-cycle yung frog and saka yung, ano, yung, yung butterfly. Additional, ano na lang yun, plus information. Pero, eto class, ang name na iagamitin natin, kapag ang isang hayop ay um, tawag dito, nangingitlog, that is oviparous ang tawag. Pero pag hindi nangingitlog, inilabas niya tao na talaga or hayop na agad, tulad ng lion, for example, or tiger, viviparous. Oviparous kapag itlog, nangingitlog. Viviparous kapag hindi nangingitlog. Diretso na offspring. Okay? And then, sa insect, meron silang tinatawag na ovipositor. Ovipositor, yun yung ginagamit ng mosquitoes and butterflies para i-release nila yung egg. Ilalagay, i-attach nila yung sa plants eh. So, gagamitin nila yung ovipositor na yan. Lalabas dun yung egg. Ayan. That's how they are produced. Pero class, mayroong mga mammals na nangingitlog. Kasi di ba pag mammals, dapat pinapanganak niya offspring na agad. Eksakto sa itsura niya, like dogs and cats. Pero may mga hayop na mammals pero egg laying. Ayan, katulad ng short beak. Ichina, uh, Platypus, Eastern Lok, Ichina, uh, uh, and then that. Those are examples of egg-laying mammals. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that that is the idea now. Let's have... how the butterfly is actually undergoing the cycle.
So from the egg. It will turn to larva. Larva stage. That's why please do not kill this kind of, you know, organisms. So they are important in our environment. Pero yung mga bata na pinapatay yan, yung mga ganyan. Pupa stage. Process, we call it metamorphosis. And the adult one will come out into a beautiful butterfly. Yeah, see that? That's how <laughs> the process of now, and the last uh, video that we're going to watch is for frogs. So laying eggs, just like what we have seen a while ago. Fertilization outside the body, external fertilization. And then the egg, uh, we'll watch, of course the adult will watch for the eggs to keep them safe. like a fish <laughs> looks ugly but, but the limbs are developed internally I won't touch it, but definitely. Oh, well. Absorbing back into the body.
there you have it. So that's how frog develop. In, from egg going to adult. Okay, so we'll have five questions to ask. Will you please prepare your show me board? Please do not show it un until I ask you to, to what, raise it or to show you answers. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so will you please write another term for animals that are, um, I mean, egg-laying animals? What do we call egg-laying animals? Done. Okay, done. Done. Yes, so you please in the count of three, two, one, go show it. Okay, Alia correct, Amar, Dana, please at the same time. Percy correct, Kia, Liana, yes, that's correct. Mia, Jester, no. Angelica, yes, that's correct. Nyan, correct. Please, I'll show it at the same time. Those who cannot uh, use show me border cameras, please type your answers. Um, after I say, I mean, count three counts. Mari is correct. Cassie, also correct. Jace Lee, yes. Ara. Okay, the correct answer is oviparous. It means they are like an egg laying animal. Okay, now number two. Describe the mode and type of reproduction of a frog. Describe the mode and type of reproduction of a frog. Done. 
Okay, for what class, I will just respond to the queries. Meron pa tanong lang na. Okay, please. Um, Okay, go. Three, two, one. Type your answers. Ah, ang haba nun. So anyway, externals. I will not accept external sex. Well, kasi it's not complete. It should be external fertilization, sexual reproduction. External fertilization, sexual reproduction. And yeah, it should be complete. Because it's different word day for it. Fertilization is different from reproduction. Okay, those who answer external fertilization, sexual reproduction is correct. No, wala. okay. Next, let's, let's proceed to number three. Okay. What do you call the fusion of the egg and the sperm? What, what is the term we use referring to the union of egg and sperm cell? Union. Fusion. Done. 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 Okay. Done. Three, two, one, go. All right. All right. So I can see that your answers are correct. Please, at the same time. <laughs> Wrong spelling, Siana. Yes. So we'll just check the spelling. It should be F E R T I L I Z A T I O N. That's fertilization. Correct. Fertilization is correct. Now let's proceed to question number four. What do you call the reproduction? Okay, the type of reproduction wherein there's no need of fertilization. What do you call the type of reproduction? There is no need of fertilization. So it means it's okay without the fertilization. They will reproduce even without that. Done. 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 Okay. Will you please show your answers in three, two, one, go. So the correct answer is yes. Hannah is correct. Oh, by the way, Hannah, your answers uh, here are correct. So chat box nothing. And Bella, the correct answer is a sexual reproduction. Yeah, that's right, a sexual reproduction. So we're now down to our question number five. Will you please give an example? Any example of a sexual reproduction mentioned in our lesson? Give an example of a sexual reproduction. We talk. We are talking about the process. Give example of some types of a sexual reproduction. Done.
Cardan. Dan. Dan na po. Dan. Dan. Okay, so you please show your answers in 3, 2, 1, go. <laughs> but animals yung binigay ninyo? I am actually asking about uh, the process. It should be, um, it should be like, Alias answer is correct. Percy, J, uh, Dana is correct. Um, the two processes is budding, B-U-D-D-I-N-G, or the binary fusion. Yeah. Bi yeah. That's it. Now, actually, class, not only those, hindi ko naman minention lahat yung uh, sexual reproduction, pero kung babasahin nyo yung inyong book, uh, go over there. Sa page, tingnan ninyo sa page 113. Meron dong regeneration. Yung starfish, ang tawag sa kanya is regeneration. Hmm. By the way, next time, may iaano ko, isashare sa inyo next meeting natin about the animals na meron siyang two, uh, ang tawag natin doon, two sexual orientation. Meron siyang ovary and meron siyang testes. Yeah, there are animals like that. So next time ko na lang siya share kasi mabubombarded na kayo ang dami ko nang share na additional info. So baka naman naman. But anyway, so I want you to read that kasi nakalagay dyan lahat yung mga example pa ng iba pang sexual reproduction in animals. 113 hanggang 115. Yeah. And then, uh, so that next time when I ask you about examples of animals that are um, a sexual reproducing, so you can give more examples. Hindi lang starfish, hindi lang um, sponges, meron pa kayong ibang maibibigay kasi binasa nyo siya. But pag hindi nyo siya babasahin, you cannot give more examples. <laughs> I tell you, para pag tinanong ko, give more examples, mm, marami dyan na mention. Please read that. External fertilization. Fish, also external fertilization. Fish. Uh, may ano mo na ako may tanong kung umiinom daw ba ang isda ng tubig <laughs> or paano matulog ang isda kamukas uh, <laughs> ay alamin nyo ha <laughs> Alamin niyo yung mga question ko, ha? Para sa next... Uh, hindi naman. Hindi yun so, an assignment, ha? Anyway, ano natin next time. So that's it, class. For actually this week, nag, nag, uh, this day to day, nag-ano tayo ng konti, nag-extend. Kasi nga, ay sobrang laki ng coverage ng animals when you talk about animals. Because next meeting, we'll talk about plants and flowers. Uh, kasi meron din siyang... Uh, meron din silang reproduction mode of reproduction. Alam nyo ba yun? So we'll learn. Paano naman ng plants nagre-reproduce? Paano naman sila nag... Meron ba silang uh, female reproductive parts? Meron bang male reproductive parts? May ganun ba sila? Kasi sa animals and human, pareho nang meron eh. No? How about plants and animals? Paano sila nagre-reproduce? Kasi kahit hindi nila natin itanim, dumadami eh. Dumadami yung damo. Dumadami yung halaman. Oh. Why? Why? What is the reason? So we'll uh, we will answer those questions by the, by, uh, the next um, I mean next meeting. So that's it. Task. Wala akong ibibigay na task for today kasi nag, nag quiz tayo. So it means i ano nyo lang yung score nyo four points or what. But I want you to read your book, okay? Kasi um, hindi natin madidiscuss yung book ninyo kasi nga hindi naman pwedeng basahin na natin ang basahin niyan sa online class. Mauubos yung oras natin. So, sayang yung, um, in, yung mga information or yung mga knowledge na nakalagay dyan. That is why I want you to read us. Okay, yun yung gawin ninyo magbasa. At least, magbasa kayo hanggang 4pm yun. May one hour pa kayo to read. Then, then, take some photo while you are reading your book. Okay? Tapos isenda lang sa messenger. Habang binagbabasa. Until 4, I, I believe, pag nagbasa kayo ng 1 hour, marami kayong matututunan. 
sa book ninyo. Kasi ang ganda ng science links, isa to sa pinakamagandang books na meron tayo. Kaya, huwag niyong sayangin na meron kayo niyan. Okay, any questions? Na so far? So, did you learn something? For today, yes. Please, do not forget all the things that we have reviewed because next meeting, I will give another five questions for animal reproduction and another five questions for menstrual cycle. So there are a total of 10 questions. Okay, uh, see you next time. Thank you, Pusser. Pusser, bye. mga beginning quiz po ba natin sa mga next meeting? Ano na lang po yun? Google form o show me board po? Google. Google, yes. Sir, thank you po. Bye po, thank you po. Okay. Yes. Bye po, sir. Bye. Bye po, sir. Bye, -bye po, sir. Okay, thank you. Bye bye, sir. Bye.